So at a retail level, how is a consumer's life going to change with the innovations around blockchain, cryptocurrencies, et cetera? I think, first of all, physical money will disappear almost entirely. And for most people, that's already happened, that we use not only credit and debit cards, but mobile payments like Venmo. And I think that trend will only accelerate. I think the biggest change that you may see is that if central banks issue digital currencies, you won't have branch banks engaging in fractional reserve banking anymore. In other words, your paycheck wouldn't be deposited into Bank of America or JP Morgan Chase. It would go into an account at the Federal Reserve. Everyone would just bank at the central bank. Branch banks would disappear. So your point of interaction with the financial system may be just through one giant national blockchain run by the central bank. And this would fundamentally change the way that you handle your personal finances because you wouldn't be interacting with the consumer banking system that you have grown up with and that you have been using for now. And this wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. I mean, it's worth remembering that these banks all failed multiple times and required taxpayer bailouts. And you wouldn't have to worry about any of those kinds of disruptions in the future, either as a taxpayer or as a customer. So banks go away, reduction in fees, more confident or secure that you won't be a victim of hacking and or fraud. That's the big benefit is that the security of your financial data should be much higher on a blockchain. So you're not going to wake up and learn that 143 million social security numbers have just been hacked from a credit bureau or that you know somebody opened a bunch of accounts in your name by taking your information. All of that hopefully will be in the past if banks... Or, or if central banks are able to co-opt the blockchain technology and use it as a line of defense against what is a huge problem of cybersecurity. So the legacy players might get hurt and might shed value because they don't want to risk their current businesses by running afoul of regulators. And it yes. sounds like Jamie Dimon poo-pooing, you know, that, that reminds me a lot of retailers in the 90s saying no one will ever buy anything online. It sounds like they might collectively lose market capitalization or value. Startups gain because they, they're too stupid to know they're going to fail and they can be crazy and aggressive and really go after stuff. What about, do you see any legacy industries that will likely increase in value or do you see any big winners in the existing marketplace from this technology? Not obviously. In fact, I think the best analogy is to consider the peer-to-peer -peer economy. And the example I usually bring up at the start is the music business. So you must remember Tower Records and Sam Goody. I know Tower Records. I used to go to the Tower Records on Western Boulevard. I love Tower Records. Yeah, and it's not there anymore. It's not. And that is what is really going to happen to the banks and the brokerages, that you're going to move to much more of a peer-to-peer -peer interaction between savers and investors. Um, to send international remittances, you won't need a chain of four or five banks on the SWIFT network. You'll just send a Ripple token with the transfer attached to it. So it's not so much that banks are going to gain or lose, it's that they'll just become unnecessary. So my prediction... That sounds like a loss. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, they're just going to be gone like tower records. And you think banks, you think large financial complexes will disappear? I think they will be greatly reduced. They will preserve some parts of their businesses, but you'll see many defensive mergers and consolidations of the financial services industry, banks, brokerages, exchanges, and so forth and many of these things recreating themselves on a peer-to-peer -peer basis using blockchains as a substitute for the trusted third party, the payments processor, the clearinghouse, the bank. Um, the whole point of the technology is to make the middleman disappear. And I think one by one, you're going to see this happen in different product lines and financial services. So in finance, or one of the basic tenets of finance or investing is diversification across a bunch of asset classes. Do you recommend that cryptocurrencies be part of someone's portfolio as an asset class? Maybe a very tiny amount. Tiny amount? They're still very, very small relative to the community of investable assets, you know, well below 1%. And it's a little funny because they're not a hedge for anything. You would think that they would move inverse to some industries or provide some insurance against the sovereign currencies in the market, but they seem to be out there by themselves as a type of pure risk. So I think the case for an investor to hold these is pretty minimal. And I, I wouldn't advise holding the currency. I would advise learning about the blockchain technology and thinking how it may change different industries. Do you own any cryptocurrencies? Absolutely not. It's very risky. 
Professor David Yermak, Chair of the Finance Department and the catalyst behind our FinTech specialization. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Scott.